lost in thought, the cakes were burned to a crisp. Murder flashed in her eyes. She grabbed the room. She went to the unwashed stranger. She began beating him about the head and body and beating him and beating him and beating him until he ran for his life. <laughs> he ran into the woods with Lightafwine's wife running after him, broom still in hand. <laughs> Had his wounds not healed enough for him to sprint well, he would have died right then. <laughs> now when Lightafwine came in from the mill, his wife told him what had happened. He was saddened by this, but there was not much that could be done for it. It was water under the bridge or water through the mill or something like that. <laughs> and he knew well what his wife was like. <laughs> now that night, another visitor came to the house. This visitor was known to them. It was a man in Wolfstan. Wolfstan was a, a, a chieftain in their area. And Wolfstan had great news. He said, the king is alive. The king is alive and he is near here. He is raising an army to fight the Danes. Leofwine, you must come with me. We will drive the Danes from Wessex. So Leofwine said goodbye to his wife. And he grabbed the only weapon he had, a small axe for chopping wood. And he went with Wolfstan. They marched for days with the king's army. They met the Danes on a field on a hill, actually, with a single tree in the middle of it. And they put the Danes to flight after a long afternoon of fighting. Many men were dead. Leofwine was exhausted. And he stood there. Sweat was dripping down his brow. Blood was dripping from his axe. Blood of other men was dripping off his clothing. And he looked up and he saw Wolfstan talking to the unwashed stranger. Well, he felt bad about how things had ended for his wife, the broom, that whole thing. <laughs> so he went up to the unwashed stranger and Wolfstan. He got to about the distance that I had to his highness here. And Wolfstan said, Leofwine, when one approaches the king, it is customary to bow or kneel or put down the axe. <laughs> Leofwine threw down the axe, ran home. Didn't say anything more to his wife then. I'm home. Can we meet the Danes? What's for dinner? <laughs> and they went back to life. Leofwine's wife tended the house. Leofwine ran the mill. The Danes were driven from Wessex. And one day, because a lot of people come to this house, one day a rider from the king came to the mill. He said to Leofwine, the king wants to see you. <laughs> been expecting that. <laughs> Let me just tell my wife that I'll be going for a while and I'll be back in some time. If I'm coming back. <laughs> the writer said, ah, oh, yes, your wife. <laughs> <laughs> the king said something about her. The woman comes, too. <laughs> and so they rode to the royal residence. The rider rode. Left when and his wife walked behind the horse. But presently enough, they came to the royal residence. They walked into the king's hall. And King Alfred stood. King Alfred said, Recently, these people had me as a guest at their home. And the crowd made a happy noise. Yay! It doesn't seem like a good thing. He said, this woman yelled at me because I, the king, was not good at sweeping floors. And the crowd gasped. He said, this woman beat me with a broom because I let cakes burn. And the crowd gasped. He said, this woman treated me like I was an incompetent servant or an unworthy child. And the crowd did not gasp, for they had no breath left. <laughs> <laughs> and you people are very good. <laughs> he said, this woman treated me as a member of her own family. <laughs> Play of wine 
I simply nodded. <laughs> and King Alfred said, no matter how this ended, painfully, were it not for this man and his wife and their hospitality, I would be dead now. And it would be Danes in this hall, and not us. The crowd breathed again. And King Alfred said, and I must reward these people. Therefore, he offered Leofwine a position on his royal guard. He promised him that he would always have a better weapon to carry than a small axe for chopping wood. He said that he would give Leofwine and his wife a small residence near the king's residence. And once a year, Leofwine's wife must go to the royal residence and bake cakes for the king. <laughs> and she must not let them burn. <laughs> and every day, one of the king's own servants would come to Leofwine's residence and sweep the floors. Because henceforth, Leofwine's wife was forbidden from ever touching a broom. <laughs> And well, I have to report, they did not live long beyond that day. They did live happily after. Oh. <laughs>